back tonight with two games for you. First of all, Norwich versus Southampton. Norwich are up for this one. Southampton yet to get a foothold. Southampton, of course, got their season back on track after that, well, dreadful gubbing by Leicester City when they lost by nine goals to nil. This for Norwich is a chance to reignite their season. Drimic was found Dermich was found on seven minutes, but you can see he lacks sharpness and he takes a couple of he- heavy, awkward touches and the chance is gone. Ings up the other end, two minutes later, hits the target of a diving header. Southampton could have had a penalty in 31 minutes and in my opinion should have. Closer had his hands around Obafemi and pushed him to the ground. Very unfortunate. Could have been 1-0 two minutes later, Norwich concede possession with some slack play. Stevens drives forward, plays in Ings, who crashes his effort off the bar. Norwich keep getting caught short at the back. Southampton well on top after Norwich's early promises in this game. Second half, 1-0 Southampton in 48 minutes. The goal from a throw-in, Southampton win the first header. Then Obafemi manages to get a lucky break of the ball into Ings, who fires home emphatically, gives Cruel no chance. If the pattern of this season for Norwich is to be believed, this will be a costly home defeat. Every game they've conceded first in the season, the league that they have gone on to lose. A big 40 minutes for the home side, who need to show a lot more. But it got worse. Southampton have been stronger away from home this season and also they ha- than they have at St Mary's. 2-0 on 53 minutes. Ings drives forward as Southampton pile forward. He's looking really sharp. Rolls in Armstrong, who cuts inside, beats his man, drives the ball in the bottom right-hand corner. It also went through Close's legs. I don't give Norwich much hope now. On 58 minutes, Bednarek gives the ball away. Cantrell plays in Pukki, who goes wide and the chance is gone as Pukki's shot is blocked. Almost three... Three up at the other end, Obafemi finds Ward-Prowse, beats Cruel, but it's cleared off the line to give Norwich a glimmer of hope. Southampton playing some great stuff on 62 minutes, Redmond dances through, finds Obafemi, who then finds Ward-Prowse, but the shot is blocked. Southampton could give Norwich a drub in here. Dermich and Puki link up well up the other end, but the Finnish international's effort was blocked, as it just wasn't Norwich's day. Norwich do have the ball in the net from the corner, but Vrancic is well offside. Armstrong denied on 71 minutes, found by Redmond, who has been excellent. Digs the shot out. Cruel gets down well. 3 0 on 78 minutes. Redmond coolly drives past Cru- uh, coolly drives past Cruel. Ings plays on Obafemi, who passes it to Redmond, who drives the ball into the bottom right hand corner. He was my man of the match. I mean, Danny Ings did get the official man of the match, but listen, Danny Ings was was sensational as well. I mean, probably maybe he sh- maybe he did edge it, but for me, Redmond uh, ran the show for Southampton. Norwich get a chance on eighty minutes, but it's dragged wide by Adaya. Wouldn't have made much difference anyway. Norwich were well beaten. We move on to the main event, Tottenham versus Manchester United. But before I go into this one, I want to praise Marcus Rashford. The work he has done uh, to help raise money and help and influence the free school dinners, I think there was a, the government policy where they were going to scrap that. And he basically uh, changed their mind. So, you know, listen, I can't really kind of give him, uh, give him enough superlatives for, for what he's done. I mean, it's been a difficult time for a lot of people and um, there's been certain... Uh, you know, footballers that haven't really covered themselves in a lot of glory, glory players like Kyle Walker, uh, Delhi Ali as well, uh, to name a couple anyway. But uh, he has uh, conducted himself absolutely incredibly. Uh, and the, the thing is, uh, I've, I've heavily criticised young English players be- uh, because of the f- wages and transfer fees and the, the politics they try to play. Um, but he should be very proud of himself, of course. So uh, moving on to the game, Harry Kane makes his long-awaited return here for the home side, although you could be forgiven for thinking that he wasn't even playing in this game. Manchester United much improved since Fernandes was signed from Sporting. No surprise that Pogba doesn't start, although people were expecting him to start. First half, Manchester United come into this game 11 games unbeaten. Tottenham have lost five of their last six games. Of course, form goes out the window because of lockdown. Opportunity for Rashford on 21 minutes. Fernandez finds Rashford, but Lloris gets down well. First opportunity in a game like like the others has a pre-season feel to it. 1-0 Spurs. Bergwijn found by Aurier, goes past three United players, drives the ball past De Gea. He should do better. He gets two hands to it, but he can't keep it out. Yet another error by De Gea. Excellent by Bergwijn. This was against the run of play. 27 minutes gone. 1-0 Spurs. Free kick whipped in by Fred on 29 minutes. Rashford could score. It's a bit of a mess, but Spurs survive just as the ball goes behind. Almost 2-2 minutes later, Aurier has acres of space down the right-hand side, crosses him for Son, gets his head to it, but it's a great fingertip save by De Gea. It's a great period this for Spurs. 
Second half, Fernandez and Martial link up in 53 minutes. Fernandez makes good contact with the ball, but drives it just wide. United pile the pressure on Spurs in 63 minutes. I would expect them to get an equaliser. They are well on top. A minute later, it could have been 1-1. Pogba plays in Fernandez, takes a lovely touch to spin on the ball, plays in Martial, and it's a heroic bit of defending for, by Dyer to slide in, although Dyer would soon be, go from hero to the villain in this one. Martial denied brilliantly in the box after being found by Shaw's cross by Lloris on 65 minutes. He tips it over. It was a superb save. Martial got really good contact and it looked like it was going to fly in the top corner. But it's a brilliant save by Lloris. I think this is only a matter of time though. Spurs can't get out. Time running out for United. The drinks bake and a few changes did let Spurs regroup because United were all over them. 11 minutes to go. Penalty to United on 79 minutes. Pogba goes past Dyer, who then pushes him to the ground. It's no question it was a penalty. He should never have let him get in the box. He's going to film. He should have done it outside the box. Fernandez to equalise for United. Makes no mistake. Puts it to Larissa's left. Larissa dives right. It's 1-1. Pogba plays a sublime, sublime pass on the half volley from his own half into Rashford, but Davis and Sanchez has enough pace to get back at him with five minutes left at this point. Another penalty given on 89 minutes, or so we thought, for United. Surely VAR will overturn this. There's no contact by Dyer. I mean, quite frankly, it looks like a dive by Fernandez and VAR do quite rightfully uh, overturn this one. Rashford almost in, there's a minute to go, but Sizoko stretches to deflect away Fernandez's pass. This game has really kicked into life in the last 10 minutes. Igalo finds Greenwood with seconds left. He drives it across goal, but just wide. Very good uh, point for Spurs. I mean, you could probably say United deserved to win in this one, but certainly uh, the, the second penalty was never a penalty and Fernandez should have been booked for diving. Uh, so I'll be back with uh, another video tomorrow. There's four games, so we'll see whether we do two videos or just one. We'll, uh, we'll see about that.